Hey there, Fight fans. It's John Pollock here with you for another edition of Fight News Now Extra. We're going to take you through all of the news from the weekend and then welcome in John Ramdeen and Robin Black to examine beyond the headlines. So let's get started. The World Series of Fighting Organization came out with their second event on Saturday night from Atlantic City, New Jersey, headlined by a puzzling heavyweight bout that saw Anthony Johnson move up to the weight class for the night and earning a unanimous decision victory over former UFC heavyweight champion Andre Orlovsky on straight scores of 29-28. You can expect Johnson to be returning to 205 pounds after this fight. The co-feature saw Marlon Moraes improve to 2-0 within the organization as he stopped Tyson Nam at 255 of the opening round after a head kick sent Nam to the mat and Moraes followed up with a number of shots to earn the victory. Perhaps the win by Anthony Johnson has led to renewed confidence in the Black Zillions camp, but not from lightweight Melvin Gillard, who tweeted out Sunday that he is leaving the team to return to Albuquerque, New Mexico with Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn, stating it is where he belongs. And Fight Network was your home for Glory 5 this past Saturday from London, England, which saw Tyrone Spong dismantle Remy Bonyaski as Spong stopped the three-time K1 World Grand Prix champion by knockout at 2.02 of the second round. Where am I going to stand in that heavyweight Grand Slam tournament? Oh, my oh, Lord! Massive right hand sends Bonyaski sleeping through the bottom rope. He's not moving. Tyrone Spong has knocked out. Remy Bunyaski here in round number two. Joined by John Ramdeen and Robin Black, the three of us, we went through World Series of Fighting on Saturday night. I crouched in front of my laptop. I watched a stream that stuttered every five seconds. And by the end of it, John, I told myself, you know what? I could have gone without seeing this event. Really? Yes. I actually... You, you uh, to me, are I not the prototypical I, I, fan. I don't, I don't get it. We got to see Rick Glenn. We got to see uh, Marlon Moraes. Yeah. We got to see Justin Gatchi. All prospects that can do something in mixed martial arts. And we got to see a heavyweight slugfest where we, we saw Anthony Johnson smash up the jaw of Andre Arlovsky. I thought it was a fantastic show. Sure, there's some glitz, but, glitches, but that's technology. What are you going to do? When it comes down to the fights, Josh Berkman taking out Aaron Simpson. Yeah, I think these guys are uh, on the right track, especially when there was so much turbulence going into this fight. Uh, they didn't have the cage approved yeah. on, on the night before. Uh, we didn't know if the, the show was going to happen. They Awesome the, drama. Well, the fact is that they got through the bumps and the show went off without a hitch and we got to see some solid entertainment. Yeah. We, we did learn that World Series of Fighting Gloves outdo UFC Fighting yeah, Gloves in right. the main event. Yeah, well, I mean, sure, there's going to be some issues. And hey, man, these young organizations, this is a crazy business. But I actually really enjoyed the main event. I thought Anthony Johnson looked really, really good. I mean, at 230 pounds, him dropping a 205 is going to be very easy. Throwing great kicks for a big man, really aggressive. I enjoyed it. I don't think we need to see Anthony Johnson at heavyweight in the future. I, I agree that uh, Andre Orlovsky here, you know, a, d a decent win for him here at, at heavyweight. Not anything that I think is going to propel him in anyone's uh, rankings in any way. Uh, rankings are nonsense anyways. That's what I mean. Who cares? Put Anthony Johnson, 205 pounds, sign Quentin Jackson, and you've got a fight. Who in the world would yeah, not want yeah, to see I, that? I'd like to see that. I, I found it interesting him going up a weight division because he doesn't belong there, and that was sort of fascinating. He was taking big, huge shots from the big, huge guy, and when his corners and the, and the commentators and stuff were yelling for him to stay in the pocket, they're not the guys being drilled by Anthony, by Andre Arlovsky. Anthony Johnson did land more frequently. He was able to get in there, but he was taking big, big shots at a weight division that he doesn't belong at, and I found that really interesting. My favorite moment was Josh Berkman saying, you know, John Fitch, uh, I'm more interested in the title shot, to be honest, and I was waiting for someone to whisper, Josh, there isn't a title here. Yeah, because who in the right mind would be excited about fighting John Fitch? This is a guy that makes people lose fights. Sure, Damian Maia and George St. Pierre and Johnny Hendricks are the exception, but Damian, or John Fitch is a guy that I don't think most welterweights want to fight because he's skilled, he's hard to finish, and he's well-trained. Aaron Simpson's so, a tough guy to yeah, finish. Yeah. Josh Bergman yeah. is looking very, very good at 170. Don't be surprised to see him back in the UFC. He's in crazy shape, and he looks very good. 
Melvin Gillard quickly uh, moving back to, uh, to Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn. Do you expect any, any kind of a trend of some guys that maybe are, are paying attention to a lot of the, the performances of late and maybe saying, you know what, maybe I can go elsewhere? Or is this maybe going to be an isolated incident it, with Melvin? You know, I, I know a lot of people hate gym jumpers, but if it works for you, you've got to yeah. go with what, with what works. And I know a guy like Mark Bocek has been accused of you know, moving around, but this is still an individual sport. And once the cage door closes, you're responsible for your Yourself. So if Melvin Gillard felt that, you know, I've been around, I've cruised, I've got some, uh, some training from a lot of good teams, I think the best training that I've gotten was from Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn, move back to New Mexico, uh, and hopefully he'll have better days. Yeah, and a lot of guys don't have a problem with it because when you bring a Mark Bocek or, you know, a Melvin Gillard into your gym, you get a ton from yeah. them. Even if they come by and they train with you for a year, year and a half, whatever, you get a ton by having them as a training partner. You get to see all these other skills. So the so-called gym jumper really contributes a lot as a traveling training partner as well. I agree, yeah. Uh, you wanted to mention this as well, Robin, uh, over the weekend, uh, learning that Dan Hardy will not be on the UFC on Fox card coming up in April. Jordan Meehan is in to replace him. And now Dan Hardy, uh, with this irregular heartbeat he has, it's, it's a condition that is very treatable, but one that he, he's definitely eyeing his retirement at this point. And th there's a lot of guys right now that it, you get the sense that they're kind of looking at their longevity outside of fighting. We saw it with Nick Denis earlier this year when he announced his retirement. A lot of these guys, I think, you know, coming in with a bit of a mentality watching those that have come before them and wanting to, you know, I want to enjoy my, my 30 years after fighting. Yeah, it, it's, it's a real interesting thing. I mean, first of all, sometimes when, when people are commenting and watching fights, this guy sucks, that guy got knocked out. I mean, you have to realize what these guys are putting themselves out to do, what types of physical and, and long-term risks they're taking. And, you know, for some of them to have, have fight a career, a long 20-year career in the sport is a beautiful thing. They can live their life the way they want it. For other guys, it's a really risky thing. It's really up to the fighter. And it also depends on what their background is. I mean, if you're a fighter, if you've been a fighter since you were a 15 years old and you don't know anything else, it's going to be difficult to make a living outside of fighting. Nick Denis isn't that yeah. type of guy. He's a very intelligent guy, has a university Dan degree. Dan Hardy, same thing. And yeah, same thing. So, I mean, you look at Marcus Davis, uh, I think fighting is what he's destined to do. Yeah, a lot of guys are going to find themselves in that boat. Always great chatting with these two men. Don't go anywhere because there's more Fight News Now Extra coming your way.